Welcome back to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. Visit speciesnutrition.com. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today I am so happy to announce in the studio with us live here, he is the Tom Platts of abs, Big Lenny Person. Welcome, man. Thanks, Dave. This is an absolute honor. I hate to sound like a cookie cutter, but you got me down from 450 to 290 following your dietary principles, your training, your use of fat burners, and I got me to compete in 2004 at the Southern States. I didn't know that. I didn't know you used my cookie cutter approach. Well, it works. It's not cookie cutter. <laughs> no, You're a kidding. freak. You're also a non-pro, which pro doesn't mean anything. You know, what did Tom Platts do as a pro? But who's on a first name basis in the community? Guys that last forever, like Arnold said, Jesus, Hitler himself, Dave Palumbo, Tom Platts. Those are household names throughout history. Notice I was, I was uh, below Hitler on the list. I, I'd like to try to work my way past Hitler on the list if possible, Lenny. Well, I'm sure you are. He was a vegetarian, so that puts him down. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, we don't, we don't like those guys. Hey, what do you think about, but first of all, for those of you out there who don't know who, who Lenny is, Big Lenny, you become an internet sensation, really. I mean, a social media sensation. Yes, thanks to Prince Andrew. We have, the, we have a live studio audience here, by the way. There you go. Uh, and uh, Andrew, you're responsible for all his, uh, the social media posts, because I hear Lenny is computer illiterate. Is that cute? Is that, uh, <laughs> not illiterate, but computer illiterate. I don't think he's computer illiterate. It's that he, sometimes I think he's better off not having one in his possession. Ah, okay. He well, I'm a, I'll admit it, I'm a porn addict. You're a porn addict, you do. What kind of porn do you like to watch? <laughs> well. I've heard that you're into trannies, is that true? The it's a love-hate thing. When I saw a few of them, how good they looked, how yeah. feminine they were. Right. What is wrong with the women of today? They can't look like that. They're lazy. If a man could look like that through mm. technology, right. and like I said, if you, I was, if you want to be gay, I don't think anyone's born gay, but if you want to go that route, at least like it, make it palatable for guys like us. Uh. You know, and I think actually most guys look at it. That's the biggest secret. Yeah. You know, because porn's a progression. It's like carbs. Mm -hmm. You can use them as motivation, but then again, they can ruin you. Right. And I don't have any internet access at my home either. I never did. Now, when you, if you had internet access, do you think that you would be doing watching porn all day long? Is that the problem? A little more than I need to, and it would interfere with your bodybuilding lifestyle and your okay. work. Now, now, you're very serious about your bodybuilding, so I, I have to go back and take a step back first. I know you were a power lifter initially. Ah, don't say that. Were That's you? another word for a fat F. Okay. <laughs> were you? But you are. I right? never considered myself that. You said you were 450. Yes, I was just trying to get to be the biggest, strongest man ever. Mm -hmm. And I never like to use those cookie cutter terms. Mm -hmm. And particularly that, when you look at a guy, you're big, but you must be a power lifter, meaning you're a fat slob. Right. Right? Okay, so you didn't like that. So did you like the term like, like uh, Jimmy Pelleche used, power bodybuilder? Exactly. Okay, so that's what you consider yourself. Yes. You know, like, you know, my favorite wrestlers and football players were similar to that as well. So, and you told me before the show started that Greg Kovacs was a big inspiration for In you. In the 90s, yes. Yeah. His eating, he was similar in height. Mm -hmm. Obviously, he did the right things at a young age, looked phenomenal early on, and his condition seemed to wane. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if I'm following the same route unbeknownst to me mm -hmm. with possible insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. Well, we could talk about that in a minute. but. What do you weigh currently? Well, let me ask you that. I know you're, you're, you're off gear right now, but... I've been clean for three months. It's been rough, but, you know, I've come out of it. You had uh, a little bit of a heart scare. I did. Uh, abnormal heart rhythms where, you know, I fell over. Luckily, I work at a hospital. Oh, you did? What do I you work do? in food service, so okay. I have access to free food, whether they... That's you know, I know how to good for it. building muscle, yeah. Absolutely. So, I was... 20 feet away from the emergency room entrance and I fell on the desk in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I might have attributed to a few things. They did this procedure where they go through your groin and reset your heart rate through an electrical shock. Yeah. They call that a... Well, they cast you, right? Exactly, a blip, correct. Oh, so you had an arrhythmia yes. that they fixed. And they told, got me on a slew of meds, mm -hmm. diuretics, uh, blood thinners, mm -hmm blood pressure meds, cholesterol meds. Mm -hmm. And I took it while I was in the hospital, but I was, you know, a month out from the Ruby Classic. And, you know, I said, no matter what. That's your Olympia, pretty much. You do that every year. Pretty much, although I may do the, I, I don't know if it 
disbanded it, the Diana Cadu might have been canceled or Diana yeah. herself. Mm. You know, because I'm a big fan of hers. I think she's, you know, for, she's very sexy. Mm -hmm. She happens to be a Haitian Canadian. You like, you like uh, black women, right? Yes, for the most part, yes. Absolutely. That's what you're attracted to, right? Because I know I've heard you talk about them on your Delray Misfits podcast, by the yes, way. Yes, and coming to Florida, the island women. Mm, okay. The isle, more of the island women from. Absolutely. Haiti, Bahamas. Yes. Stuff like that. From there, and then once they come here, and of course once they go on the internet, it's it's ruined. So, <laughs> you know, the way we're at now, us, us men, you're looking at other avenues, but you know, just the curvy look, and I think the way they eat is good up into a point and i think it's good for athletics they eat the high fats which you recommend yeah. they eat a lot of sugars but if you're an athlete that's good right. problem is they become insulin resistant slobs after the age of 30 and they come to in a bunch of health problems do you like them when they're in the slob form or before that absolutely not okay. no worthless okay. mentally physically i see what that type of diet does to your mm -hmm. brain mm -hmm. and your every part about you and Obviously, you, I want to learn more from you and what you did with Logan's tremendous <laughs> having him eat the right things, you know, instead of get him on the meds or something like right. that when simple amino acids will do the job. Mm, right. They want to throw a kid on Ritalin. Well, they wanted to, you know, I'm on, to be honest, I'm on a metoprolol, which is a beta blood blocker. pressure, right? Beta, okay. Yeah. And then a uh, Xarelto, which is a blood thinner. Mm -hmm. And I was told that's a must or a high risk of a stroke. I stopped the medication. Went and did the ruby. Obviously, we had a hurricane, so I couldn't really train at a gym. And what I were you doing lifting logs? Like I was lifting trees, gallons of water because, you know, my, I was upstate at my mother's and she had a bunch of us doing those. And then, luckily, the Motor City Madman, Jay Masters, who you're familiar with, has no. called up PJ Braun. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he g gave me his entire power rack and weight side on my pad just in case of future hurricanes. So you got that in your garage now? On a patio. Now, let me ask you a question. You, from what I understand, from what people, because what I did was when I previewed this video, pe I asked people to send me questions. And some of the questions people tell me is that your apartment is, is, is very slovenly and, and not clean. Well, basically, it just needs mopped. Mm -hmm. And it will look just like But aren't apartment. you in food services in the hospital? I would assume that I they am. have beat into and your I, head. I do mop floors yeah. Yeah. even after all these years because, uh, you know, that's job security. When you're going to sure. do every little job, I don't care how long I've been there. I don't, I don't like that. I work with a lot of people that think that you've been there 30 years, you know, they'd be trying to work a you know what to death. That's what they all say. They don't even want to walk across the, you know, I take pride when I hustle. Yeah. And I give it just as mile as I do in the gym. Mm -hmm. And, but at home, I go back to what the old theory was, why walk when you can sit? Why sit when you can sleep? Yeah. And I go by what's going to make me grow, eating, sleeping, yeah. and move up as little as possible. So I figured, you know, and I don't need to bring girls home anymore, home anymore to fornicate. And I figured, you know. So you're saving energy. Correct. Now, you know, they say there's mold on the walls and such. It hasn't bothered me since. Mm. As long as my place is cool and it's well stocked in the refrigerator. Yeah. You know, you don't really need to do that. Mm. You don't I, worry, but you don't worry about maybe the performance enhancing or the performance lessening effect of maybe like mold in the air. You might be breathing. I don't in. buy that. Okay. I think the best defense is an immune system, okay. a strong immune system. So do you sleep a lot because of that? Well, to be honest, on certain cycles, you know, you have trouble sleeping. I do yeah. use a CPAP mask. I've been getting great sleep since I'm being mopped, but I call it death sleep. Yeah. You wake up weaker and fatter. Mm. All right, so you were off the drugs for three months. Was that a tough thing for you to do? Very. Okay. Now, what would be a typical stack you'd be on? Well, off-season, actually, I started yesterday. I could go into detail, but it would be very easy for viewers to follow. Again, Chad Nichols, Ronnie Coleman, mm -hmm. off-season stack. Mm -hmm. Which is what? High test. How much is high test? His recommendation was three grams per week. What, what would you take? What I'm doing 2,400. 2,400 million, which means you're taking, what, like a shot every day? Or how I'm that taking work? the... T, T400 twice a week with three cc's each. Monday, Thursday, Tuesday, Friday, it's a cc and a half of Equipoise 300, Deca 300. So that's 450, 450, it's 900 of both, mm -hmm. plus 50 megs of Methandrostenolone, which I like to say the Damn name, yeah. you know, three times a day until I can't stand that anymore, which means I 
don't get the side effects I do from a trenanthate, but it gets to the point where your blood pressure is so high, you bend over, you're gushing blood. So you and bleed, I, you get nosebleeds. Yeah, and I do a lying leg curl, there'll be a pool of blood or push downs <laughs> at the gym and there'll be blood on the cables and it freaks people out. Yeah, I And I can so. understand that a, a bit, but when a guy freaked out, I told him, you should be glad that my blood's on that pulley, you know? So you're not really doing 2,400 milligrams of testosterone a week, you're doing 2,400 milligrams of injectables per week. Is that right? Correct. Okay, because it sounded like a lot of tests, but you're not only doing 400 milligrams three times a week, you said, of the testosterone, right? The 400? Twice a week, but three cc's each, Monday and Thursday. So three cc's of the test 400? Correct. And it's tolerable. Oh, so that's 1,200 milligrams. Right. You're doing twice a week. So you're doing 20, right. you are doing 2,400 milligrams. Now let me ask you a question. I, back in my day when I competed, I took a shot once of test 400, and I had the flu. For, it felt like I had the flu. You know, you, know, you get the test flu. I felt so sick and so sore at the injection site for, for like four days. You're taking three cc's Were you taking time? a legitimate pharmaceutical compound? Probably not. Who knows? Well, back in my day, everything was legitimate. Maybe, well, your you're, day, not maybe you're not taking a your legitimate Your day's still my day. Babe. I know I like to say <laughs> yeah. I'm 18 forever, and I'm sure I look it, but believe me. <laughs> chronologically, yeah. which I don't like to say, and it goes yeah. back to a point. Let me tell you something, viewers. You must believe you're 18 forever. When you're eating correctly, when you're replacing the hormones, that's what you are. When you start thinking, oh, I'm 40, does Tom Brady think like that? No. Right. Does James Harrison think like that? Mm. No. Right. And they're the top performers to this day. You'll right. see them on Sunday. Well, why do you think you're so popular on the internet now? Why do you think that, that, that you've become this new like, Honesty. craze? Yeah. Honest to God, everything I say is the truth. Yeah. I don't lie. And I believe, you know, you could call it God, you can call it creator, you can call it whatever. I'm not a religious person. I was brought up to be, I was brought up to be Catholic, but you have to admit there's a creator and you have to admit there's right from wrong. Whoa, look at that freak. <laughs> and you, you know. Now, do you like the way you look there or are you critical of yourself? Ah, uh, the legs. Or they're overdone because I ride a bicycle. For, I refuse to have a car. Okay. Because that keeps me on the straight and narrow. I could afford a car. Right. But you know, it keeps me out of trouble. It keeps sure. you away from the temptations. Like what? Well. Like going to like whorehouses or something like that? Worse. Oh, wor like what's worse than that? Things I've done in my past. Like what? You said right. you're honest. Be honest. Well, you said you're honest. You're that's why people like you. It's nothing that through bad neighborhoods or I don't want to say stalking, but going over married women, Haitian married women's no. houses. Oh, oh, you like, oh, you get like in front of their husband. Well, I wouldn't say I like to use that word. I like to call it, you know, it's what men do. You pursue women. Okay. Stalking is another So if some woman cutter. is married to another guy, you'll actually go to their house? Well, I used to believe I had a real, you know, belief that, hey, as a superior man, you love your woman, you better go out and fight me. Or at least pull a gun on me with some respect. Like your neighbor would up here <laughs> on the road. Yeah, Le Lenny went to my neighbor's house, the one who, does, who told me uh, before that he doesn't believe that he has to be neighborly to me. And... I, you know, people think I was exaggerating. You went there, he was an asshole to you, we right? We pulled up, we thought it was the correct address because you got that GPS system. <laughs> we saw a basketball court, uh, maybe, maybe that's Dave's place. Right. And it looked like a plantation. And I got out of the car, I had to spit. And I spit in the yard, looked up, and this guy came out on the porch like this. And he's like, wrong address. I said, is this 50 something or another? He says, no. I said, wrong address. I said, we're looking for Dave Palumbo. He said, wrong address. He says, I said, Dave Palumbo, the bottom here. He goes, I don't give a shit what he is. <laughs> yeah, you know what? This guy was, was yelled at me. I, I never had said two words to him. And I told him to go fuck himself. So the problem is, <laughs> like, that's why I don't talk to neighbors. I don't want to be friends with neighbors. But you know what? This guy has got a real problem. I, I wish you would have belted him and knocked him out. I think I would have been shot. But <laughs> but, rightfully so. But you know what? You're Dave Palumba. You're one of the legends yeah. in this world. Thank you. And what the hell are you? Yeah. He's got a problem. Wait, I said, what? I, actually, I said, uh, lucky you don't have a rapper living here. And he laughed. He thought that was funny. <laughs> you know, worst case scenario. You would, you would think that like I was doing like illegal activities out of here. It's the guy is he's got mental problems down the Unbelievable yeah, mental problems. All right, let let's get back to you for a second because. Um, I want to see how you got your start in this whole thing. I understand that you, uh, you played football. Your dad was a football player? My dad was, got a full ride to Boston College. Actually, I'm from Oakland. You may have said incorrectly I was a native flu. I know from 
Oakmont, Pennsylvania, born and raised here, which is eight miles south of Pittsburgh. Okay. A nice blue collar wasp town, mm -hmm. you know, a church and a every white Anglo Saxon American. Church on every block and a bar on every block, you know. <laughs> and a good football tradition, Western Pennsylvania. Of and he he grew up with his father committed suicide oh, when wow. he was three years old, jumped off the bridge into the uh, Allegheny River. And his mother at the time, you know, she was an immigrant. Her, you know, what is your background? Croatian, What's your ethnic background? Croatian, which is Yugoslavian. Yeah. My father, my mother's Polish. So it's a, wow. you know, it's what Hitler referred to as the scum of the earth. Vi hybrid vigor, we call that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, good genetic line. And back then, you know, she was a housekeeper and she had a single mother with eight kids. And they didn't have welfare at the time. They maybe got some government cheese or butter. Mm -hmm. And many times he'd come home from school. Also, he was born with a skin deformity, like red splotches of skin all over his mm -hmm. body. Right. And as a little kid, it was a daddy. He looked like he got salami and cheese all over. He'd give you a funny look, but <laughs> him. <laughs> Meaning your dad didn't like it right off the bat. Yeah. He from that. <laughs> but many times he'd come home, his furniture be on the street. Right. And in that town, everybody talked and, you know. Why would his furniture be on the street? Couldn't pay the rent. And back then, you know, oh, there really? wasn't. All these laws you have now, you're the, they dump your stuff so you, on Were you guys poor growing up? No, obviously he had a you know, business degree from Boston College. You were talking and he was in the auto parts, parts franchise. Oh, when your father no, was I a kid? No, I wasn't. I was a, but oh. you know, I knew his background. His brother also excelled on the football field, got a full ride to Penn State, then ended up playing at Pitt. Mm -hmm. Both got career short of knee injuries. Mm -hmm. He actually has an article in the Philadelphia Inquirer. He goes drafting the Eagles in the 12th round. Rookie end is too aggressive, and it described in detail how he hit the starting quarterback, which you don't do in practice. Oh, really? And the team jumped on him, beat him up, and the reporters came and said, uh, I'd like to get that article, if anybody ever find that. It should be August 1968, Philadelphia Inquirer. He had a copy wow. in his scrapbook we used to read all the time, and they asked him why he did it, and he says, I'll do anything to make this team, even die. Right. I'll do anything right. to make this team. And he, you know, being cut short his rookie year with the bad knee surgeries they had then, you know, with sure, the big no scars. arthroscopic surgeries, yeah, back then. I remember as a kid, as a toddler, he'd take me down to the local coach and say, oh, my son, this and that, he's going to be better than me. And he drilled me from day one, had me eat and write mm -hmm. correctly at, with the knowledge at the time. And did how you to like football? I did, but looking back, there's a few things that went wrong. He was way too tough on me, mm -hmm. even in Little League Baseball, I remember coming home and him beating the hell out of me oh, for really? striking out. And I was so more afraid of him. And you know, obviously he did a 10 feet away, take the football and just drill you, which made you tough. Right. Showed me the technique, showed me how to intimidate people. Mm -hmm. And you know, for some reason, you know, probably because he threw away my comic book collection, I didn't play my senior year. I was doing okay. I actually quit my 10th grade year because he was just to you know, try to say, you know, get him out of my case, you know, he's always, so your Physically. father wasn't helping your ego, he was hurting it. He didn't realize that. Well, he, he, was he was helping tough. with the training. He had weights downstairs. He was on there seven nights a week, grinding and groaning, and then going to bed right after that with the old York set. Mm -hmm. You know, putting pic local pictures up of players going to the prom from the high school. is you know, locker room bulletin board motivation. Mm -hmm. And he was just so obsessed with it. And any guy that would ever talk to him, he'd look at him or look at me and say, where'd he play his major college ball? Like you were basically nothing right. if you didn't. Mm -hmm. And I was on that road to getting a D1 scholarship. At, I blame it for me being a cookie cutter too. Wanted to be liked. He said, don't worry about being liked. You get a D1 ride. You'll have more girls, friends, and connections than you ever imagined. Mm -hmm. He goes, don't, and you know, I didn't follow his advice and I didn't play my senior year. And that was it. I was kicked out of the house. Really? But looking back, well, how yeah. old are you? Seventeen. There was no law. They didn't. You know, the local police knew him. Did you, know? you? You didn't go to college? No. I was basically on my own. You know, my mother. He divorced my mother. He just, you know, went very hard. And I don't blame him. That's what I was born to do. I like doing it. And you know, looking back now, that's why I try to tell the maniacs, you know, go all out, and I try to make up. So you, you know, I always say we become our parents when we get older. Do you feel like now you've, it's like you've embraced all his, his advice and protocols. I do, I apologize you're living, I know. You're living the lifestyle now that he wanted you to live when you were younger. We don't speak, but 
you know, I, if he's watching it, I apologize to you, Dad. And hopefully, you know, he's very healthy, you know, very clean cut guy. Mm -hmm. He's a great father. Yeah. I just got caught up in the, you know, what they taught in schools and that I was being a victim, I was being abused. Other people would tell me, no, he wasn't. A good ass whooping never hurt of anybody. Not getting discipline hurts, as you can see with, you know, the rampant. I, I think there's a fine line, though, between encouraging and, and being tough on your kid and then maybe going too much. Or maybe he crossed that line. Because, you know, I'm a new father now, and I, and I, and I have to, you know, I, I'm into this whole sports thing. I'm sure when my son starts playing sports, I'm going to be like a, a nutty parent, too. And I got to figure out, you know, where that line is where I could push him, but not maybe not enough. Like, I always thought my dad didn't push me enough, and he was a big sports guy. But now, looking back, I kind of respect the fact that he kind of let me make my own decisions. You know, because he could have pushed me more, and maybe, and I was a good athlete. Yeah. I'm thinking, man, if he only pushed me more, maybe if he would have pushed me more, I would have been like, fuck you, Dad, and, and I would have done what you did. So there is that fine line that you have to figure out. Exactly. And I also, a big, I'll say this right now, and I'll blame the Weeder organization. I followed their diet against my father's wishes. Mm -hmm. They had that cookie cutter, high carb, mm -hmm. low, low fat. Right. As an athlete, my prof I, after a full day at school, I was dead tired. Oh, I'm sure, I'm sure, because it was too many carbs. Let me ask you a question. This cookie cutter thing, you don't like to be the norm. You like to be outside the norm. Is that, is that why that cookie cutter term drives you nuts? Well, Who's a cookie cutter in, in the bodybuilding industry now that you would say? 99% of them. Give me like top names. Like who you say, that guy's a cookie cutter. I don't respect him. Just the guys that wear the same shirts, the gear. Give me an example of a person. The late Rich Piano's crew. Okay. All looking like, you know, that same so look. So Rich wasn't a cookie cutter, but the people who follow him were, is what you're saying. Pretty much. So you're not a 5%er then. Never were. To do that would be a cookie cutter. I'm okay. not a bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. I consider myself maybe the modern day Jim Thorpe. Mm -hmm. I consider myself an athlete. You think you can high jump at that weight? No. Okay. My athletic ability has went down the tubes in the past three years. Yeah. And I'm wondering if it has something to do with some of the things I've been taking. Like, like what? Like GH. Hmm. You think it's, it's, it's decreased your performance? It's decreased the size of my... I'm, a, I'm leaner. I'm, you know, obviously I haven't used it in three months, but... I notice, and somebody said it about you too, they mm -hmm. notice thinning of the arms. Mm -hmm. I take it that means it's burning off visceral fat, mm -hmm. which if you ever see a guy that took straight juice, mm -hmm. say an Eddie Robinson, mm -hmm. or say, you know, Arnold back then, they got that full look, mm -hmm. not ripped. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I think GH gives you that chewed up and spit out look, like Rich Gaspari in his recent company. You know what I'm talking about? I, I, you know what I think? Bill Wilmore, you get that. I think there's guys that have genetically good arms, and then when they take GH, it looks amazing, Ronnie right. Coleman. And then you have guys that, I never had big arms. I wasn't a big arm guy. I got big arms through you know, chemical enhancement and training. You know, I had right. 22 and a half inch arms when I was competing at my best. So I wasn't meant to have 22 and a half inch arms. Ronnie Coleman, when he started bodybuilding, had 20 inch arms. So you know, just from playing football. Yes, but pound for height for height. You're bigger and better than Ronnie Coleman. Well, Hats I, off to you. I, I thank you, Eddie, for that. But you're definitely in the freak you. zone. Absolutely. Right. Well, you know, look, I try to maximize what I had, the tools I had. I did it at a younger age, so it enabled you to do it. If I had started at 35, I probably would never have been as good or as big as I was. Now, having said that, you're what, how old are you now? I will be 48. But like I said, I'm 18 forever. Okay. That's that's I know, but you're but you, on Earth chronologically. Yeah. Chronologically, you're 40. So I mean, at this point in time, are you trying to still put more muscle on, or are you trying absolutely? To, oh, you are. You should always be fighting for more right. muscle. If you're not fighting for more muscle, whoa! Look at that freak. <laughs> that's a good 350 right there. <laughs> what? Full. What's the what's the end game? What are you looking to, to accomplish? What would you like in the next five years to accomplish bodybuilding wise? I want. Be on stage is that's one of the biggest, hardest guys that ever set foot on a stage. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about terms like symmetry and this and that. Right. I think you ought to be as big and as hard as you can get. How, how big do you think you can be body weight wise with, with, with glutes, of course? I think there's no reason I can't be 350. If Greg Kovacs was 330, right. You know, I'm obviously, I don't think I take in enough. My legs dwindle into nothing. I ride a right. bike for, you know, and I got to sort of adjust the cardio. Mm -hmm. I got off the Stairmaster. Yeah, definitely got to get up. I just think you got to get as big as you possibly can in the off season. Mm -hmm. right. 
and then with so much muscle that it hopes just less now, withers away. Now, I got to give you some constructive criticism because I was watching one Absolutely. of your videos, one of your squat videos uh, online that you have, and I noticed you're very strong, but I noticed you don't do full range motion. You don't go all the way down. Yeah, do you think that that's maybe, you know, sacrificing some of that inner... Well, actually, I am squatting lighter and deeper. Oh, you are? I am. Much deeper. Hmm. And, I, and I'm embarrassed to say, I don't want to even say what I'm doing right now, but I am going deeper on that. Now, it's, with my surgeries on my arms, I cannot lock out on a bench press. Okay, but Jimmy Pelletier can't issues. do that either, and he's got... Right. He's, that's fine. I don't think you need to lock out to get big pecs. Right. Branch Warren doesn't lock out. Look at the size of his chest. Exactly. Right. Do you, do you adhere to the, do you like more strict form or do you like the open form, kind of the way Branch and, and Ronnie and Johnny Jackson train? Well, I've, when I was younger, yeah, it was anything just pushed away from me and Andrew Kalura, a point A to point B, but mm -hmm. uh, I got to work to where I don't injure. And I had many, many tears. I had the biceps ten, mm -hmm. you know, sure. osteophytes removed. You had two bicep tears, is that true? Yeah, well, I tore the head and I tore the tendon completely off. Wow. Surgery, but it's you know it's come back. I had nice peaks. I don't have that anymore, mm. and uh, I just want everything bigger. My calves are basically hopeless, and I'm wondering if it's a circulation issue. Because mm. when I was 415, you could see fat guys with the discoloration. Yeah, I have the discoloration too. So that's from lack of circulation, correct? Pro I would. Th it was from when I was 350, or three, or three, 320. I was 320 yeah. at five, ten, probably five nine and a half. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Were you able to sleep? Um, you know, I, I snored, but I didn't really, I see now, now that I'm lighter, I don't snore at all. So I don't think I had a real big snoring problem, but when I got bigger, I did snore, but I didn't stop breathing. I don't think yeah. I had apnea, which is different. Now, I just want to ask you a question, you know, yeah. that when they called you, when they termed Palumbism, mm -hmm. Palumboism, yeah. right. did you take offense to that? Were you self-conscious about no, it? No, you know why? Because I don't take offense to anything. Nothing bothers me. Like yeah. I always say, you know, people can make up whatever they want. People, in this world, first of all, if you're going to be a public figure as the way I am, you have to be willing to accept the good and the bad. You just spoke about And that, I think that more people embrace who I am as opposed to hate on me. But there's a lot of haters. My neighbor's a hater. I don't even know why he's a hater. But there's people that just won't like you in life. They'll, they'll, look at, yeah, they'll look at you and they'll just say, I don't like this guy. I don't, and there's no reason a lot of times. And a lot of times the people who don't like me when they meet me in person... They change their mind, you know, because they just see a persona, and sometimes there's a lot of jealousy too. I mean, I guarantee you, there's people out there that are jealous of you. You know, people would say, "Well, why would this guy be jealous of him? He's got a better physique." Well, because maybe you're being acknowledged for what you're Correct. doing. You know, even for good or bad, you're being acknowledged, and people are paying attention to you. And I think YouTubers, you hit on the reason they like me and Dave. We're honest. Yeah. Now let me. Now, ask I'm Dave. Can I see how honest you really are? <laughs> yeah. Do you look at porn? Are you a porn addict? No, I'm not a porn addict. I, I, I never a really was. Porn addict. When I was no, when I was on a lot of drugs, I definitely looked at more porn than I. I don't look at anything. I don't need it anymore. But you know, I have. I have a wife. You don't need it. No, I'm not on six thousand milligrams of testosterone a week. <laughs> That, that definitely has something to do with it. Absolutely. I, I think that it's very hard to be monogamous in a relationship when you're on a lot of gear, too. Yeah. Because it changes your, your thought patterns. And I think it's worse for women. I think the women who are on the gear become nuts because they got the female hormones and then they got the male hormones in there and they're conflicting and telling the, the brain to do opposite Been there things. and done that. Yeah. And if you don't satisfy them, look out. You're in trouble. Did you date a woman bodybuilder before? Date a woman that took Diana Ball, a Jamaican woman that looked like Serena Williams. <laughs> and I had a little problem satisfying her. She you did. took her nails and ripped me open. Now, I, I, I also saw another video, and I don't know if this is too graphic for this show, but I guess nothing really is, that you're into, like, um, the women pooping on you. Is that true? <laughs> well, again, it has to do with a lot of what you're taking. Yeah. I'll what be were you honest. taking when, when we were into that? You know, the high, a lot of tests. Uh -huh. You know, a bulk. So I'll, right. I'll, you know, the funny thing was, when I'm dieting, I don't know if it's the anti estrogens or what, but I have no interest. And that's when women come on to me. I of can't course. win. They don't like me because I'm big, sweaty, and heavy right. when I want it. Right. But when I start dying, they come on to me. I have no interest. I want to train. I actually want to eat. <laughs> you know, my, my strict meal. Right. Get away from me. Right. I can't win. What kind of women seem to like you that come on to you? Do you have your own little groupies? You know what's funny? I've gotten extremely tan, you know, obviously through the tanning agents. Are you using Milano tan? I'm Not right ask now. You that. I do use a pre-contest. Because you get like purpley, I noticed. That's when you use a little too much of it. Yeah. yeah. Like an eggplant. And the funny thing is, that's when the black women shy away. 
and the white women come on to me. Oh, so the white women like the nurses. When you're darker. Oh. Yes, and the black women. Why you do that to yourself, the Haitian? Oh, they say. like you when you like. Why you make yourself ugly and black? <laughs> But you like the Haitians, so maybe you do better off season then. The, the old school Haitians are great. Yeah. You still look pretty tan right now, I gotta tell yeah, you. Yeah, I go out in the summer, big believer in the vitamin D and the, and the tanning. Oh, so you do the natural vitamin Absolutely. D? Absolutely. Yeah. And I take uh, 25,000 units in gel cap form. I'm oh, a big do? believer, the okay. king of vitamin D. Yeah, me too. Me too. D3. Let you me ask you this. Maniacs? You know, to be, to be exposed to the sun, I mean, to get your vitamin D production, you have to really. Expose your whole body. Will you lay out on a lounge chair outside? No, I lay out naked in the back. You do. It's a fenced-in area, but what I if there's some like like Tyler, my producer, flies drones? So if we flew a drone over your house, we might catch it. Yeah, you know, I have a I have a towel that I'll throw on. Okay. You know, but if the landscapers come, you know, one kid came with a lawnmower. Oh, excuse me, sir, can I mow the lawn? So get the f out of here. But my actually the uh, girl that lives next door to me, you know, I caught her looking through the blinds, which you know really really I just the hell with it. What does she know? look like? Not bad looking. Really? All right. Yeah. So that I mean, so you're still appealing to women, you find? Uh, Sometimes the women don't like the big guys, you know. Women are they're terrible. I mean, the way they're brought up today, they have no idea. If it was 200 years ago, believe me. They all wanted a big guy. Oh, really? And yeah, it's defense. They, you, you yeah, the highwaymen would come out to your cabin out here to steal, rape, and kill. <laughs> I mean, you know, another thing people say they don't want to have kids, which is my problem. I'm going to have a kid. Andrew Kalor, you're going to have a kid. These two have kids. What do you stand before your creator? And he said, what did I give you that for? Right. To fornicate? No. You better, get, you better get cracking. You're 48. Well, I, I waited to 49. You don't want to wait too long. Like I said, I think barring accident, I could be 160 years old with the technology. Right. I really believe that. Now, let me ask you a question. You went, you, you went through this health scare recently with the doctors. I'm sure you got the speech, right, from the cardiologist there? That Twice, because I went into it two months later because I didn't take the blood thinners. Okay, and what happened? You, you my legs to... swelled up to the point where my calves, the skin cracked open. So oh, yeah, that, you got the ulcerations you had, huh? The yeah. skin, the, the edema in the lower legs was, like, ridiculous. Now, why do you think you've improved now? Because of the medication you're on or because of I think because I couldn't sleep. I was on the trend and anti because I could do, after a contest, a muscle recruit where I'll go back to the Anadrol test and trend and mm -hmm. Right. and stuff my face for a good month or two after the show to put on the muscle that I've lost. And I was getting to the point where, you know, you can't sleep even with the CPAP mask, so right. i got to sleep like this. And obviously, when you sit in a chair, your legs swell up. Right. Now, are you worried that you know, you're doing damage to your, to your heart? Because, look, if you were 20, it's a different story. The body's a little more resilient. Now you're older. You see guys like Rich Piana dying and young guys like Dallas McCarver dying. The doctors are obviously warning you about the, about the gear. Are you concerned about your health? I mean, because you obviously have a lot to contribute to the world. Uh, I am, obviously. Are you willing to die for this sport? It's not dying for the sport. It's going all out and living life second by second. Any embryo that's fertilized, you're guaranteed of one thing, and that's death. Mm -hmm. You're not even guaranteed to be born. Right. So you never should fear the one guarantee in life. And what I tell people, you know, like I said, I'm not looking at religion, but you have to say there's a creator, and you have to say there's a force of good and evil. Mm -hmm. You know, the Catholic, the, the things I was taught, I see the ridiculousness in that, and I look at Jesus as the ultimate non-cookie cutter. He took on everybody. He hung around with prostitutes. He hung around with tax collectors, the lowest forms of life. Mm -hmm. And he criticized current tradition and law to the point where they nailed, he nailed them on a cross. Right. So, you know, you, you have to believe in him, you know, and you look at Muhammad, you know, he's nothing, he was a cookie cutter. He was a fornicator. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they put him up as a god. And they have that type of, uh, you know, I get it online, this and that. They threaten me and this and that. Well, like I said, I have legions of misfit maniacs that any time you guys want to pull that convert or be killed, say, we're going to snuff you out. I'll tell you that right now. Who are the misfit maniacs? Explain to that, us. A mis that's a phenomenon of people that watch our channel. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you honestly, when I was in the hospital, I received over 100 email get well wishes from all over the world. And the director there, you know, I've worked the hospital going on 28 years. Mm -hmm. 
And she told me she never had anybody receive. She said, you got a lot of friends. I said, well, actually, that's from the internet. Receive that many get well wishes. So. <laughs> we <laughs> we got to stop the police here. This is great. <laughs> Tyler, can we take a camera on, uh, on handheld on this one? I knew it, Brad. <laughs> I don't know if the cops are here for me or for you. Brad. <laughs> Let's go see. <laughs> Can you get a camera?